This special aeronautics and space report brought to you by NASA. It's called ATSF. Well, ATS stands for Applications Technology Satellite. Dr. Werner von Braun is Vice President for Engineering and Development, Fairchild Industries, builder of the soon-to-be-launched ATSF spacecraft. Through master ground stations, ATS will broadcast television programs to small, inexpensive antenna receivers. In other words, for the first time here, a satellite has enough power and enough beaming capability installed that the signal received on the ground is strong enough for reception essentially by a normal television receiver. As a result, we can equip thousands of remote locations with receiver sets that can uh, get the benefit of direct television. The most dominant part of ATS is its 30-foot antenna that beams signals to the ground. It's shown here unfolding as it will in space. From its 23,000 mile high orbit, ATS can travel around the Earth once every 24 hours. Since the Earth rotates at the same speed, the satellite appears stationary. During its first year of operation, it will be put to good use over the United States. One of its major jobs will be to provide health services to remote regions. Uh, imagine uh, a nurse in a remote uh settlement in Alaska is trying to give birth to a baby and runs into a medical complication, then she can talk back through the satellite, using the satellite as a relay to uh, get the advice and support from a medical doctor, say, in the contiguous uh, states or even from uh, Anchorage. And he, in turn, can provide pictorial material as well as voice uh, uh, assistance to the nurse uh, while she is uh, delivering the baby, on real time, in other words. Besides the health services, educational programs ranging from career guidance to teacher training will be telecast to those who need it most. Uh, it has been estimated that in the Rocky Mountain states alone there are about three million adult illiterates. In addition, there are, of course, the children who also sometimes have very marginal school opportunities. Now, as far as Alaska is concerned, uh, uh, there are about 300,000 people in Alaska, and 50,000 of these people are estimated to live in settlements that have no permanent road access. And of course, during the winter months, and winter is about eight months in Alaska out of a year, uh, they are not accessible at all because of ice and snow and darkness. So they are completely excommunicado. And with this satellite system, uh, effective school service could be rendered to these settlements uh, in Alaska as well. During the second year of operation, some 5,000 villages in India will receive telecasts from ATS. This example was India, where 70% of a population of 570 million people will benefit from communication satellites by having uh, uh, at last some education available to themselves is a classical example of a program that allegedly uh, was the sort of a thing only the super rich can afford is now directly benefiting the poorest of the poor. In a joint project with the FAA, NASA is beginning a light aircraft crash safety program at the Langley Research Center in Virginia. This is one of 20 flood damage planes that will be tested. The actual facility was originally used by Apollo astronauts to practice landing on the moon. The 240 foot high by 400 foot long lunar landing practice area is now laced with cables which are attached to the highly instrumented aircraft before it comes crashing to the ground. Dummies riding in the passenger seats are instrumented to measure G-forces. Engineers hope to learn what happens to an airframe structure when it impacts and to develop an analytical design tool that can be turned over to the designers and builders of general aviation planes. For this first checkout test, the plane is complete except for tail section and engines. Comparable weights take the place of missing parts and the fuel tanks are filled with water for weight and balance. 
This first crash was made at an impact speed of 30 miles per hour. Future drops will be at speeds up to 60 miles per hour. Five, four, three, two, one, release. Here you can see some of the resulting damage, most of which was confined to the nose and underside of the aircraft. Crash worthiness tests like these may one day lead to the design of lightweight aircraft that can absorb much of the impact energy of a crash and hopefully reduce fatalities. It's called IMBLEMS, short for Integrated Medical and Behavioral Laboratory Measurement System. It was designed to medically monitor the well-being of astronauts on distant space flights. The system will use computers, modern communications, and advanced medical instrumentation to transmit information on a patient at a remote site to doctors many miles away. This will enable physicians to diagnose conditions and prescribe treatment to trained paramedics on the scene. Emblems. If successful, this design for space technology will improve health care and medical services to many isolated areas on Earth. In just three days, the sun delivers to us as much heat and light as would be produced by burning the Earth's entire oil and coal reserves plus all the wood of its forests. Dr. Harrison Schmidt, former astronaut and now NASA's assistant administrator for energy programs. The big advantage to solar heating and cooling is that there are no fuel costs. That through the years, once it is installed, the primary source of energy is the sun. And only modest amounts of other types of energy are needed in those few times when the sun is not shining and we cannot provide enough stored energy to operate the system. This is an experimental solar house at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Unlike most houses, energy from the sun is used to heat and air condition. This reduces that large portion of most utility bills that go to pay for getting energy from the utility source to the home. Here's how the collectors on the roof of the solar house work. Water-filled tubes inside the solar panels absorb the sun's heat, using it for direct hot water heating and to operate an absorption refrigeration unit for cooling. Now let's move into the uh, house itself and see what's going on in there. As we come into the solar house, we see a standard air conditioning unit, absorption type air conditioning unit, and a heating unit for winter use. In the next room, we have something that you normally wouldn't see in a house. We have a bank of instruments that is recording the information from a variety of sensors that are part of our engineering evaluation. For example, here we're seeing a printout, a graph of the amount of solar energy that is hitting the plate collectors on the roof. This special report brought to you by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.